Hey, Chef, you don't have a spare heart, do you? They constantly ask for them. Those aristocratic pigs. You can find a bucket full of them near the entrance door. To be honest, it's for personal use? I knew immediately I had hired a beginner, but I'd hope you had at least a little taste. I am full of taste. I am a... You're a runt. That's what you are. Stop interrupting my official presentation. I perfected it over years. Listen, Ant. Fresh hearts are really expensive, and I surely won't waste one of them on a kitchen boy. Okay, I get the message. What do I have to do to get that heart? Now we're talking. I need some special number five meatballs, cooked with the recipe you can find on that counter over there. I'll need them in large quantities for tonight, so try to hurry. The preparation seemed elementary, but the ingredients would be a problem. Florida ginger? I have no idea what that is. It's a root, but I don't know its shape. Normally, my supplier delivers it already grated. And the other ingredients? Don't we have any of them already? You can find salt and pepper on your workstation. For the rest, you need to make do yourself. Ever since I threw that cleaver at him, my supplier has disappeared. Oh, and be careful with the exotic meat. It must have a fresh new taste, something never tried before. These aristocrats become more and more demanding. Can I take that parmesan from the shelf up there at least? No, it's only the crust. I keep it there to lure out those damn rats that plague West Miami. Tell me about it. I've also had my share of headaches with those little pests in my place. So I'd find salt and pepper right on the workstation. Considering the sophisticated nature of some of these ingredients, the Molesberg residence seemed like a promising place to start. Hello. Hi, Lars. I need a quick search. Of course. Do you need information on Eric Molesberg? Or maybe his daughter? Nah, uh, much better than that. I need to know what Florida Ginger looks like to prepare some meatballs. Your investigative methods are even more bizarre than I thought. I never back down from even the most absurd challenge. Give me a second. Here you are. You should look for a little plant with wide leaves and red flowers. They look like small artichokes if you examine them closely. Mm-hmm. Little plant, red leaves, shaped like artichokes. Got it. If you want to obtain its spice, you'll have to gently extract the root. Excellent. You just saved me half a day of investigation. We'll catch up later, Alice. Keep me posted. Nothing. Still no trace of that phantom homeless guy, Roger. Judging by the description I had, that surely had to be the Florida ginger. Delicately, I extracted the root. By grating it, I'd be able to obtain the spice I needed. A good way to enjoy sunny days on the beach. Not as good as green dart, but a decent replacement. If I asked you for some ingredients, could you help me? Mmm, lo siento mucho. I don't deal with the kitchen myself. The vintage wine, though. Senor Molesberg has always some bottles, but he does not keep them in the mansion. Do you know where he stores them? Unfortunately, no. But you know who you should ask? The gardener. The gardener has vintage wine? Actually, he shouldn't. As a matter of fact, he will never confess to you. The point is that le gusta beber, so from time to time he nicks a bottle from El Señor and hides it in the shed at the back. In the shed, you said? Huh, good to know. Oh, but he'll never let you in. He keeps the keys on his belt and guards them as if they fueran part of his body. 
Don't worry, I have no intention of wasting time asking. Let's make this sipu. There were the keys to the shed, hanging from the belt of the gardener. Asking him would be useless, given that they were covering up his little crime. The only solution was to try lifting them from him. There was an obstacle, though. The huge brim of his hat blocked my view. Maybe if I made him bend over... Hello, good man. Yes? Have you got any of these ingredients? Incredible! This seems like the recipe for meatballs my mother used to make. What nonsense. These are needed to create powder to help detect fingerprints at the crime scene. Huh, a PDO egg. That's curious. Our Betsy is a purebred. A Sicilian hen, to be precise. But that's exactly the quality I need. Can I take one egg? I don't think it would be a problem, but I must warn you. That hen is a little surly. And can you tell me anything about the Florida ginger? I can't help you there, sorry. Aren't you the gardener? Confidentially speaking, I'm not exactly an expert botanist. Mr. Molesberg took it for granted after he saw my topiaries and hired me. In short, you're totally useless. Lupe was right. The gardener completely glossed over the vintage wine. Let's talk about vintage wine. V v vintage wine? <laughs> never seen, never heard, and, 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 and in fact, I'm a teetotaler. Such a guilty conscience. Lupe was right. I would never get him to talk. Never mind. The keys were my target. Stick around. With Ramos, it had proven to be a good plan. So, why not? Just then, I realized I hadn't set my alarm clock. At that point, retrieving the phone and throwing it back into the leaves would have aroused suspicion. I had to come up with another way to make the phone ring. Good idea. I dialed the number of my cell phone from that phone. Well, it was ringing. Now I had to hurry up. Now that the gardener was bent over, I could clearly see the shed key. People should really add velvet fingers to my list of nicknames. Hey, you know what? I guess I lost my phone in that pile of leaves. You freaked me out with that damn vibration. I thought it was a mole attack. I was suddenly hungry for broth. The hatch didn't want to stay down. The spring was defective and tended to pop the hatch back up into its original position. I could use the lock that caused me a big problem earlier to solve another. Now, buy me if you can, you fiendish hen. One more egg for me, one less for you, Featherbrain. Yet I didn't feel like leaving the diabolical creature locked up. I've always been a fan of personal freedom. The cook demanded exotic meat with a taste never tried before. Well, as far as I'm concerned, that one satisfied both requirements. The cook demanded exotic meat with a taste... Hey, not bad at all. Toilet in the same room as the bed? <laughs> Interesting idea. And there was the reason for my raid. Pebbles and dust, nothing more. The boxes were stacked in no particular order. 
I didn't know what they contained, and I couldn't be bothered finding out. It was a... the... well, whatever its inspiration was, it was well done. It was a nice and shiny clothes stick. That clothes stick was too appealing to leave it where it was. Fortunately, it was retractable, so I managed to put it in my coat. Being very careful, I believed I would be able to grab that piece of parmesan. I had collected all the necessary ingredients for my brief excursion into the culinary world. Now, I could start the actual preparation. My sous chef table was waiting for me. Let's do that. And now, salt and pepper. Now, I just have to follow the recipe step by step. First of all, the meat had to be minced. I'd be starting my culinary career by mincing meat for dogs. I put the meat back in the can, ready to be used. I must admit that it emitted an inviting aroma. The meat was ready to be prepared. The grater was ideal for... well... grating. Let's start with seasoning. I had to follow the recipe precisely. I hope to crack open the egg without breaking it. I've always been really bad in the kitchen. At that point, I turned the griddle on to start cooking. I'd extract the spice from the root using that grater. And now, the final touch. Finally, after a half day of unpaid hard work, our incredible Chef Lazarus had completed his little culinary masterpiece. Now that I think about it, it still seems crazy to interrupt an investigation just to make some meatballs. But part of the reason I'm famous is because I never back down from a challenge. Yeah, not bad for a beginner. Here's your meatball, chef. I'd give it up whole damn. And you took only half the day to prepare them. Maybe I underestimated you, lightweight. Let's see what you did. Hell, it's formidable. I meant passable, that is. I told you there was a real cook hiding deep inside me. I just had to spread my wings and fly. Can I take a heart now? Suit yourself. I'll see you at 8 o'clock tonight and be on time. Like a Swiss watch. I had finished in there, and I'd probably never touch another stove again in my life. Just a minute. Lazarus Bundy! What the? Now, I could finally leave. 